about producing. We talked about writing the vision and working the vision. And many of you right now don't even understand that the last few weeks of this year is going to supersede everything you have done in the beginning of this year. The last few weeks of this year are going to be so powerful that you're going to forget the toil and the labor of the beginning part of this year. God spoke to me last night when I was preparing this lesson and told the people that when we get to December 31st, we're going to be able to look back and say, look what the Lord has done. Come on, let's be honest. Some of us here this year, we've experienced some unexpected failures. Some things that we thought were going to come through actually fell through. But the Holy Ghost told me to remind somebody that even though it fell through, you're going to pull through. Meaning that where you fell last year, next year is going to be the year of success. The same place where the enemy tried to break you, God is going to build you. I don't have a long word this morning, but I need to encourage somebody this morning to let you know that, listen, you're not going to leave out of this year empty-handed. But a matter of fact, you're going to leave out of this year having more than you have ever had in your life. Some of y'all don't believe it, but let me tell you something. God is giving it to blow your mind. You better get a pedicure because God is giving it to knock your socks off. Motion the ankles because what God is getting ready to do, you're only here for the What God is getting ready to do is prove to your enemies that where they thought they left you, you were not going to die there, but God gave you the power to get up and still produce. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, I got power to produce. So we understand that this year, everybody say this year. Come on, for some of you, this year has been a challenging year. Who am I preaching to? This year has been a rough year for some of you. It's been a year of transition. Some of you even have been dealing with the spirit of frustration. That spirit of being irritated and aggravated. Frustrated because what you thought should have worked didn't work. Frustrated, watch this, you've been fighting long trying to get ahead, trying to make some stuff happen. But God wants me to remind somebody that your place of frustration is actually going to be your place of favor. When you look at Ezra, the fourth chapter, and I'm on my way somewhere, Ezra, the fourth chapter, uh, talks about while they were building the wall, that the enemy hired counselors to frustrate them. And in the process of becoming frustrated, the building ceased. And so some of us were in the process of building and, and producing, but somehow because of frustration, we got stuck. Anybody can be honest? Yeah, yeah, be honest and say, listen, some areas I was making progress, but it seemed like I Stuck. But if you read the text in the book of Ezra, the fourth chapter, where it talks about them being frustrated, the Bible says, and the story flips, that the same ones that frustrated them, read the text, was the same ones that end up financing the rebuilding of the wall. But what are you saying, Bishop? Not to do not despise your place of frustration, because the same thing that frustrated you is the same thing that's going to be the fuel to push you into your place of favor. Oh yeah, come on. Some of you are at a place right now and you're scratching your head trying to figure out, God, what am I going to do with this situation? How am I going to come out of this? How am I going to bounce back? How am I going to recover from this? Well, God told me to tell you, this situation right here is necessary for what you're getting ready to produce. It's a part of the equation. I wish you had three folks here that understand that all things work together. For the good of them that love the Lord and call according to his purpose. You want to touch somebody and tell them it's working together. Come and tell them it's not by accident you face the opposition and the resistance. It's not by accident that doors were shut in your face. It's not by accident that you were declined and rejected because God said I was creating a platform to let you know that I got this. My God, look at somebody and tell them refuse to be frustrated, but tell them walk in the favor of God. This is what's happening now. Watch this. God is literally positioning us, and he's setting us up. We said that this is the year of acceleration, and this is the year that things are going to happen at a quick pace. My God, and even one more thing I forgot to mention. Some of you have been dealing with unexpected financial setbacks. Dealing with the lack of finances and resources. I got to hit this because God told me to tell some of you the reason why your money got funny and your change got strange. Because he had to prove to you that money can't stop you from making moves. 
See, and let, let me help some of you here because some of us depend on the resource. But God said, I allowed you to go through a dry season just for a moment to show you that money don't make it. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach here today. How do you know that money ain't making? Because even when money was funny, you still had a praise. You still, y'all ain't gonna help me preach here. You still was producing. Come on, you have all the money you need, but bills were still being paid. Still, look, come on, look at your neighbor and say, who's looking good? Come on, come on, look at the order. Come on, with these financial setbacks, with these droughts, with these disappointments, with these layoffs, terminations, downsides. But look at you while other folks were broke, busting, and disgusting. You sitting up here with your best self. You still looking good. They're still good. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Still smelling good. Still looking good. Because I understand that money is not my source. God is my source. Take my money, but I still got God. Take my House, I still got God. Take my car, I still got God. Matter of fact, be clear that you took all of that. You set me up for the greatest comeback ever. My God, look at your neighbor, your neighbor. I may have lost some stuff, but I'm going to recover it all. That's why Psalm says it like this. Let me read it from the text. Psalm 66 and 12 says, Thou hast caused men to rattle our heads. We went through fact. We went through water, but God brought us out into a rocky place. I came to tell somebody here, yes, you went through the fire. Yes, you may lack the money. Yes, you may lost some money, but God told me to tell you your poor days are over. I came to prophesy to somebody on October 20th, 2013. You better hear me, all nations, this is the brokenest you'll ever be here. My God, whatever's in your account right now, this is the lowest it will ever go. Whatever you deal with right now, this is the worst it will ever get. Because after this, you ain't going nowhere but up. You ain't going nowhere but up. I need somebody to go up, 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 up. Come on, I'm walking into my way. Somebody tap your neighbor and say, wealthy place. Come on, come on, don't get mad, tell them I'm wealthy. Come on, touch your neighbor, tell them they, uh, you sitting next to a wealthy person. Come on, you sitting next to a person. Come on, you me here. That that favor, you sitting next to somebody that ain't broke. You ain't you sitting next to somebody that can pay off your bills. Y'all ain't gonna help me. You sitting next to somebody that will pay your house off. I need somebody to call up in this church. We are wealthy. My God, my God, Pastor Daniel will come, this is the millionaire world. Y'all ain't saying it like you believe it, this is the millionaire world. Come on, my bank account may not see it, but I know in a few more days, what I've been looking for is getting ready to manifest. Ain't no way in hell I can go through all this hell and come out broke. Ain't no way in the world, excuse me, ain't no way in the world I can go through all this drama and come out broke. But after this, I shall come forth as pure gold. I need somebody to shout up in this place. Come on, slap somebody and tell them you hear the preacher. You wealthy. Come on, slap somebody and tell them, wake up on the bishop. Tell them you wealthy. Tell them your birthdays days are over. God's getting ready to bless you with so much. Your children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren. Every time they see your picture, they're gonna fix the picture because of the inheritance that you left for them. Somebody that tell them we are wealthy. And so, we were made to produce. This is what God is saying to us. I'm almost there, brother Earl. There to produce. Everybody said produce. Now go to Genesis, the first chapter, real quick. Genesis 1. Because when we're talking about producing now, ain't no failures up in this church. I ain't talking to nobody. I ain't saying nothing here. Ain't no failures in this church. Ain't no weak folks in this church. Come on, I ain't going to use that word. Uh-huh, I'm going to find another word. Ain't no punks in this church. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But we were created to produce. All right, let's look at the definition of produce. It means to cause something to exist or happen. So if I was created to produce, 
That means God has given, let me say it like this, he has given you the ability, and I want you to write this down. He has given you the ability to create and control. Two words. To what? Create and control. I need you to catch this because I'm taking you somewhere. When we talk about producing, I have the ability to create and control. So now let's flip this now. I have the ability to control and create. So that means whatever is in my life right now that's out of control, I got the ability to bring it under control. All right, all right, go to Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 1, 27. We got to look at this because here it is. This is the problem. Some of us are letting stuff control us when we need to control it. Let me tell you something. You, you, you want to get me upset and get me all in and, and just get me caught up. And, and I'm out in public and I see a child running through there telling the mom and the daddy what to do. All right, y'all ain't going to help me here. But come, come on, how many y'all been in a restaurant? And that little child next to you just cut you up. They run running through the store, pulling stuff off the rack. Come on, tell, tell the mama, I ain't going to do this, I ain't going to do that. And you look like a child, I don't know. Come on, Watch this, because ain't no way to learn something that you have power over should be controlling you. And some of us are here guilty of the same thing and may not be a child, but we're dealing with situations and issues that are controlling us. But I can't even look at your neighbor and tell him, get your control back. Watch this, he created us to create and to control. Genesis 1 and 27. So God created man in his own what? Image. And in the image of God created he him. Male and female he created them. Alright, so 28 verses where I want to go. And God did what? Bless him. Now, I want you to write this down. Bless means to be empowered to create or produce. So when God blessed them, he put inside of them the necessary ingredients that you need to produce. Folks sitting on the answer, well, I ain't got this, I ain't got that. The reality of it, you got it, you just haven't tapped into it. You'll catch this on the way out the parking lot. What you need to come out of debt, you already got it. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach it. What you need to bring order in your house, you don't need Isaiah Van Zandt, whatever her name is. Well, you, you already y'all ain't gonna help me preach it. You think you need counseling, and you think you need folks to validate you. No, when God made you, He blessed you, He empowered you, and gave you what you need to produce. How many of y'all have ever been against the wall before? But somehow, when the Holy Ghost spoke to you, He gave you a strategy to come out. You didn't need nobody to prophesy. You didn't need nobody to lay hands on you. But you tapped into what's on the inside of you. And I came to preach to some of y'all sitting up in here. The Holy Ghost said, it's time for you to tap in. My God, slap somebody and tell them, tap in, tap in. Come on, no, no, no. Tell them, tap in, tap in. And God bless you. And said unto them. Y'all with me? What he said unto the what? Be be what? Be what? That's why I have four babies. Come on, be what? Yeah, yeah, y'all ain't gonna help me here. And what? Multiply. Touch your neighbor. Tell them, go ahead and have that baby. Go ahead and have that baby. Some of y'all trying to shut me down. I'll tell you. Never mind. Just don't look at my life and say it. I can't tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Come on, here. Be what? Fruitful and what? And do what? Replenish the earth and do what? Shut now, underline the word subdue. That's what I'm trying to go, subdue. I looked at this subdue because we talk about be fruitful. We talk about multiplying. We talk about replenishing the earth. But we skip over subdue. Now, here's the word subdue. means to conquer. This is what I love. And to bring into subjection. I'm almost there. To conquer. Come on. To what? Come and to bring under or into subjection. So when God created me, He gave me the ability to cause things in my life to happen without waiting on other folks to give me what I need because I'm preaching to somebody that's sitting back 
not making excuses and trying to wait for other folks. And when this happened, that would happen. But God said, what's not happening, it's time for you to make it happen. No, I'm preaching to somebody here. That's the time you wrote down, it's time to make it happen. Come on, tell them, it's time to make it happen. And so that's what it is when we are a producer, we make things happen. Now, I love to watch certain TV shows, I don't watch a lot of TV, but certain shows I like. Uh, anybody in here, people can stand up like me, come on, pray for us, come on, in Jesus' name, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to watch that show, but, but something about the show. Now, you see the actor. You see the supporting actress, or you see all of the backdrops, you see the people in the background. But the truth be told, that whole storyline is not based upon the actor, but it comes from what they call a producer. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. So the producer, although the producer is behind the scenes, you don't see the producer, but you see what the producer has produced. Now here's the problem, folks in here are looking for validation, they're looking for people to acknowledge them, to applaud them, but in this season, what God is getting ready to do, people may not see you, but they won't see what you produce. Oh God, they won't catch this when you get the CD. Watch this, watch this, stop trying to get the accolades and the applause of people, but what God is saying, I need you to just stop producing. Watch this, the producer pulls everything together. The producer calls the shots. And what God is saying, I'm getting ready to rewrite the script of your life. You will no longer be the actor. You will no longer be the victim. You will no longer be a stage help. But God said, I'm going to call you to become the producer. From now on, you will set the stage. From now on, you will speak what happens in your life. From now on, you will speak. I'm going to decree and declare what's going to happen in your life. I've got scripture for you. Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I think you're going to put somebody into a write your own script. Come on, write your own script. Stop trying to be an actor in somebody else's show. Stop trying to be a supporting role in somebody else's show. But God told me to tell you, take out your pen and write the vision. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Write the vision. Write what you want to happen. Write what you want God to do. And I declare that before you know it, things are going to start coming together. Go after the Holy Ghost. Can I get three folks to help me preach? To get your name until I am a producer. Come on, I'm writing the script. I am the producer. I'm producing. Calm down. I'm almost there. Look at your neighbor tell him, I am a producer. No longer am I sitting around letting the devil dictate to me how the story ends. No longer am I going to sit around and let my situation dictate to me how the story ends. But I wrote this script, and this script says I'm the head, not the tail. This script says I'm dead free, and I ain't broke. This script says, oh, my family is blessed. And nobody in my house will fill a sinner's grave. My God, this script says, I am a winner and not the victim. Somebody said, write the script. So he's going to give us, everybody say, power, power. To, produce. to produce. Get ready to write this up. And so now, I can produce. I can write the script. But if there's no power to go along with the producing, Nothing will manifest. All right, let's look around this room. We go around this room real quick. Look around the room. We all this technology. Got these keyboards. Uh, we got these microphones. Got these lights. So we got our cell phones, iPads. All of these things are good. But watch this. If the power go out, all of this technology is no good. And that's when the Holy Ghost said, we need to go on this 31 day fast because we got producers up in here. But now we need the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, if I had a Holy Ghost filled church, somebody would have been and said, Power! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor said, That's what we need. Power! Now, let me break this down and I'm done. Deuteronomy the 8th chapter. Go to Deuteronomy the 8th chapter now. Let me show you something because we didn't usually hear this scripture when we preach about money. But something dropped on me while I was reading this. Because we always jump to key phrases. 
of key words, but we never take time to dissect the text. Uh huh. Romans 8 18. And I said to read it or say it, say it out loud. Most of you say, but the Lord that God, it is He that gives us the power to get what? Well. well. So we only jump right to the one word, well. But something we miss in the text. But thou shalt remember the Lord that God, for it is He that giveth thee power to get. Stop right there. Power to get. Underline that in the Bible because the Lord began to deal with me and said, Here it is. We're looking for the manifestation, but we don't understand manifestation comes through the working of the power. In other words, we're sitting, we say, God, I need a job. And we sit home and think job going to fall out the sky. Y'all are going to talk back to me. God, I want this. And we think it's going to drop on us. But God said, no, I'm not just giving you the fish, but I'm going to teach you how to fish. I wish you had some help right there. Because if God said, I just give you the fish, once you're going to eat the fish and spit out the bones, you won't be hungry again tomorrow. But what I'm getting ready to give you is power that when you hit a low place, you ain't worried because you know how to go back and create it again. Oh, let me preach to somebody up in here. I remember I had a crazy number of uh, excuse me. Uh-oh. Dysfunctional. Yeah, that'll work. All right, there you go. They said to me, they were upset because I didn't let them just do what they wanted to do. They wanted to run through church and had just a little spirit, but let me now, just always come to kill a prophet. But but but, but Elijah ran, but there was another prophet called Jehu. And if you look at the Bible, he the one that said, All right, Jesus, I'm gonna cut your head off. She thought she ran into Elijah, but she met a Jehu. Y'all catch that when the Bible see you. So how do you deal with the spirit? When I dealt with the spirit, she said, when I get finished, you ain't going to have no church left. You ain't going to be gone. You won't go back to New York. No church. I looked in the face. I said, let me tell you something. One thing you understand about me, I have power to produce. So I said, if you run everybody on out and everybody leave you, guess what? I started with two. I started with two. And we're building back to where it is. Watch this. Was not bragging and being boastful. But I understood something that the power that's on the inside of me will not let me die in the of insufficiency. And see, I'm trying to preach to me on something because when the devil steals stuff from you, or you hit a road bump in the road, or you hit a pit, or hit a wall, some of you sit there and die. But God said, you got power to get back up and produce that thing. I don't care if the business failed before. This time, the business is going to work. I don't care if they fall close to fall. This time, you're going to pay the house off. I don't care if they're fighting to the floor. I'm preaching to somebody up in here. I don't care what went wrong before. This time, you got power. My God can do it again. I know I'm preaching too hard, but I feel the same. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got power in here. Come on, and as long as the power is flowing in you, no weapon form against you shall prosper. I can't even look at your neighbor until I'm just power flowing in this room. Come on, somebody shout power. Watch this now. But you know, recognize something about the power. I'm almost there. Recognize something about the power. Power will not just show up anywhere. And look at Acts the 19th chapter, Acts the 19th chapter, because here it is, God said, I want to give you this power, but you cannot expect power just to show up anywhere. The Acts the 19th chapter, 13th verse, and I'm running from the time is out. Bible talks about these sons of Sceva who shows up and they're trying to operate in a power that was not given unto them. And the Bible declares that when they go to cast this devil out, the Bible says that the devil jumps off of the individuals and jumps on them and begins to whoop them. And they leave out of their place naked and wounded. And I helped some of y'all in the past, the devil has fought, he has beaten you and wounded you. And I got news for somebody up in here. The same place I said it before, but the same place of the feet, God is going to give the great victory. This time, we are going to cause power to fall. Well, Bishop, how do we get this power to fall in this season? Number one, 
gotta create an environment for the power. How do we create an environment for the power? The Bible declares in the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, there's a man called Jairus. And then when they get to Jairus' house, the Bible declares that the same ones that were sitting in his house, they were sitting up there mourning with him. But when Jesus shows up and says that this girl is not dead, but she's only sleeping, immediately Jesus evicts those unbelievers out of the room to shift the environment. Let me pause to help some of you right here. Some of you need to leave out of here today and serve an eviction notice on the haters, the doubters, the sabotages, those people around you. 